it was insane. It was actually like you just never thought in a million years that you could drown in your own house. When we were upstairs, I held hand, I held his hand, and I said, "We have to say a prayer right now because we watched two houses fall." We were just like, "Oh my, we're we're done." But thank God, somebody saved us. God. October 29, 2012. No one really knew what was about to make landfall. But now, two years later, we remember. Flags will fly half-staff around New York, and at 8 o'clock, there will be a moment of silence. I'm in Rockaway with two stories today about Hurricane Sandy survivors and everything they've overcome. Patricia Andre was in this 19th century bungalow when Hurricane Sandy came ashore, swallowing everything she owned. A lifelong resident of Rockaway, she never thought destruction could strike here. I mean, after seeing all the different stories with Katrina and stuff like that, I always say, gee, imagine that could happen to us. That could actually happen to us. And then it did. <laughs> it was like, wow. In April 2012, Patricia took out her entire 401k to redo her house. Five months later, everything was gone. Finding little help from other agencies, she was finally able to rest her head on Catholic Charities and their affiliate, Friends of Rockaway. It was like, I, I, I was sitting on the porch in my son's apartment on 17th Street. I looked at this guy and said, God, you've got to help me. you really got to help me. I mean it. The following day, the Friends of Rockaway called me and said, we, we went through your assessment. We're going to help you. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> thank God for them. I mean, really, thank God for them. I don't know where I would have been. But what matters is where she is now, and that's in her new home, where she promises there will be a Thanksgiving dinner this year. Basically, Thanksgiving is going to be here because they have a huge dining room. When my oldest son walked in here, the tears just rolled down his eyes. He, just, he was just like, all I ever prayed was my mom's house to look like this, you know? And yeah, he started to cry, and I had my grandbaby, my, my, and my grandbaby said, Emma, little Emma's going, Grandma, I'm going to live here, okay? I want to live here. <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> But yeah, we cried. While Patricia will be celebrating the holidays in her new bungalow, Catholic Charities is still working to make all hearts finally come home for Christmas. Doreen Stack has been living in an RV next to the remnants of her Broad Channel home for two years now. But thanks to Catholic Charities, today her house is on its way. They're absolutely wonderful. They're one, they, they, they helped me from the very, very beginning. And she, they never forgot me. Even if I didn't call them, they'd make sure they'd call me all the time. They, they, they got me beds, new beds for my children and me. They're, they're, they're wonderful. She, she's always there for me, Rebecca, always there for me. They're, it's a wonderful charity, and I thank them and thank God for them. Walking through her home that was hit by several boats and even a huge tank, Doreen couldn't help but smile. The sounds of construction, she says, are a long-awaited melody. Wonderful music to my ears. I want to keep hearing it until this house is done. The, the, the drills, everything, it's wonderful. <laughs> I love it. I'm hoping everybody gets help like I got help. And uh, I hope it soon, you know, because it's long enough. Two years is long enough to be, you know, without a home. Altogether, since 2012, the Brooklyn Queens Diocese, under Bishop DiMarzio's leadership, has contributed $25 million in hurricane relief. Catholic Charities alone has helped over 1,500 families and almost 4,000 individuals get back on their feet. They promise their relief efforts will continue till the last person returns to their home on the shore. Reporting for Currents, I'm Michelle Powers.